Welcome to another broadcast from Evangel Worship Center in Mariana, Florida. Our service times are Sundays at 9.30 a.m., Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m., and our office is open 9 to 5, Monday through Friday. For more information about our church, visit our website at evangelonline.net or call 850-526-2232.
And we go, well, what do we expect? It's 2014. But you know, I got to thinking about it, and five is the number of God's grace. And I believe that as we get ready to embark into a new year, that God's grace is going to be poured out on those who have stood strong in the past year. I, I just believe that. I believe that God is going to do some supernatural things in some people's lives. I believe it for you individually, and I believe it for Evangel as a church. I believe that God has been looking at people, and he says, you know, can I trust you in the trial? Because if I can trust you in the trial, I can trust you with a blessing. Listen to me. I said, I believe he's saying, if I can trust you in the trial, I can trust you with a blessing. Because God doesn't just arbitrarily pour out blessings. He pours them out on people who have shown themselves worthy of his love, of his grace, of his power, of all of those things. And today as we come together and and once again, I want to remind you that the table is open at the back for communion. If during this time of worship, if during this time you feel compelled to say, Father, 
I go today not because of what I need. I go because of what others need. You see, when we get out of ourselves and we get into the mind of Christ, which says that he gave himself not just for us to be blessed, but he gave himself to walk with us through the valley of the shadow of death. He said, in this world, you will have trouble, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. He tells us as we've been walking through on Wednesday night, and if you've not been here, let me encourage you to come. Wednesday, we started a series on perspective and how we lose our perspective in life. And this morning, I just feel like there's some of you in here that maybe need to put on a garment of praise for a spirit of heaviness. It's what the Bible tells us. He tells us you can put on a garment of praise for a spirit of heaviness. And then he tells us that we should rejoice in him for all that he is going to do. How many of you need God to be in that place of going to do something? Let me see your hand. If that's you today, then here's what I encourage you to do. I encourage you to empty yourself out today. I encourage you to say, Father, it's not about me. If it has to be, if it's one of those things, I need to remind myself how blessed I am. So I go to the table, and it is prepared at the back. James is back there, and he'll lead you through. And sometimes you say, well, that feels awkward. Let me tell you, it should never feel awkward going to the table of remembrance. It should never feel awkward going to the place to where I say, Father, thank you for giving your body and your blood for me. So today, as we pour ourselves, and I encourage you for the next moment or the next season of time to pour yourself out like that woman did with that alabaster box. She broke it. She poured it out. The perfume was beautiful. Why? Because it wasn't about her. It was about others. So today... We pour ourselves on you. Come on. Like oil upon your feet, like wine for you to drink. What If you need to break out of that thing today, I encourage you to break out and step forward and begin to praise. Put your garment of praise on. Sometimes it's hard to put something on when we're around a lot of people because we get kind of locked up. But God, I believe, is telling us today, step out from where you are and put your garment on. For that spirit of heaviness, lift up your voice to me because I am your redeemer. Lift up your body to me, your hands to me because I am your savior today. We pour all we are on you today. We pour it all because of what you've done, because of who you are, because of all those things. Today, I encourage you to pour it out. Come on. Like oil upon your feet, like wine for you to drink, like water.
For this is the temple, Jehovah God Almighty. And we are standing in His presence on the holy ground. Come on and sing it to the Lord. We are standing on the What? Can you give the Lord a hand clap of praise in the house? Come on. Come on. I said, come on and give it up for the Lord this morning. <laughs> wow, wow. 
As Pastor said, I uh, um, have quite a lengthy story, and I uh, travel quite a bit now, uh, and Rising Star definitely has helped my career thus far, and I'm very, very thankful for that. Matter of fact, leaving again from here straight up to Nashville today. So um, I'm very thankful for what God's doing, and would love for your prayers to continue to be sent my way, please, absolutely. So... Uh, but uh, I'll have people ask me to share our story because we do actually have quite a, quite a story that God has given us. But you know what? I have to say this before I tell it. There's not a person sitting in this place that doesn't have a story. Everybody here has some kind of story of how God brought you through something. Whether it's one or a few or many things. There's something God's done for you, and all of us have a story. And the biggest thing that I, I, I would like to say, and this is not the point of my message, but I want to let it to be known, your story can change lives. <clears throat> and it doesn't have to be this long, major story, but I do believe God wants to, is, is asking us, what are you going to do with your story? You know, I gave you this story, but what are you going to do with it? Are you going to sit around? When it's easy and not use it and share it to people, I encourage you today, take your story and be a minister and touch and move lives as only God can through your story. And um, I just feel like saying that sometimes because people look at our story. Because, yes, it's a, it's a long story. But you don't have to have this story that's the, the length of a 25-chapter of book uh, to be able to have the ability to get and share your story. It can be anything that God's brought you through. So I just wanted to say that really quick, because um, especially with something someone mentioned earlier, and I was like, you know what, it doesn't have to be that. Whatever your story is, is your story that God wants you to use to touch someone else's life. So anyhow, um, real quickly, I, uh, to, to start uh, and recap a little bit for some of you all what God has done for me, uh, back in, in 1999, I met my rock, my... Savior, my love, my soulmate, my everything that is to me, my husband Todd Hornsby, who's in the back. We got married, decided to, to have children, and in 2002, I was told was not going to happen for me. I began to pray and ask God to please take the desire from my heart or uh, heal whatever situation it may be that would be causing us from not being able to have children. And then next thing I know, God pulled a miracle, and I conceived a child, and that little precious little girl sitting right there that was born on May 20, 2003. Two weeks, she was two weeks old, two weeks later, with my husband in Iraq, and unable to be here because he was in the Army National Guard at the time, Gabby actually threw up over two ounces of blood. So we had to rush her to the emergency room where they told us she had pleuric stenosis. And then uh, they sent us to Sacred Heart Hospital in Pensacola, Florida. And uh, that's when they told us they were going to have to open her up, put a stand in. But how many knows when mama prays, heaven pays attention. And um, um, so I prayed and all of us began to pray. And when we get to Pensacola, Gabby's healed. Nothing had to take place. Yeah, yeah, yeah great. So uh, we, um, Todd, finally, he, he gets back home, and Gabby's eight months old, finally. He's, he's home. She's eight months old, and he gets to be um, uh, with her and be the daddy to her that he wanted to be. And, and um, then when Gabby was uh, two and a half years old in 2005, in June of 2005, my husband was diagnosed with cancer. And uh, so we had surgery, and we thought it was all behind us. And then after s six months later, six months later, after he was diagnosed with cancer, Gabby was diagnosed with cancer. And uh, she was diagnosed with optic glioma, brain cancer, and it's a cancer wrapped around her optic nerves. And three days after, we found out that she had cancer, and they had did a major eight-hour brain surgery to try to remove the cancer is when Gabby went blind. After a, a year of chemotherapy, it started coming back, and it uh, was okay, but then it came back, then it was okay, and it came back. But during that time, my husband was re-diagnosed with cancer. 
So he had to undergo more chemotherapy. Shortly after that, Gabby had to be put back on chemotherapy. Her cancer came back. And then she went from another year of chemotherapy, and it came back. Then we went for proton beam radiation. Then it came back. Gabby's ended up having five rounds of chemotherapy, proton beam radiation, followed by three strokes, all of which have left her blind and unable to now speak. Uh, life has definitely been challenging for the last nine years. But I am very happy to stand on this stage today tell you that two of the most important people in my life are no longer battling cancer. Thank you. As you all know, my father was diagnosed with cancer November of last year. Today, he's cancer-free as well. I can tell you if there's someone that you've ever met that would love to get rid of cancer, right here, okay? Anything that I can do to help battle that awful thing called cancer, I would do it, and I am. I'm very active at Is It a Well. The biggest thing we can do is pray. So with that being said, now that you kind of understand some of the things that God's done for me, yeah, I actually even almost died in a car automobile accident. Uh, car caught on fire, state trooper saved my life. It was crazy. I'm tell you what. We got a story. One day I'll write a book. And uh, we'll see what happens from there. But the reason why I even remotely take time to share that story is because the reason why God allows us to go through things, in my opinion, pastors, because there's some things he wants to teach us. There's some things that he wants us to learn. There's some things that he wants to, uh, to do in our lives. He wants to shape us. And I said this last time, and I'll say it again. One of the hardest times that I was going through, at, we lived at Ronald McDonald House a lot in Jacksonville, Florida, before we moved there. And one of the greatest things that I learned while I was there, and I was reading a book, it says, God allows all these trials and all these tribulations to come your way because he's developing your character to catch up to your calling. Everybody in this room has a calling. And your story is a part of what God was using to get you prepared while he puts you on this earth to accomplish. You're still breathing, so he still wants to use you. There's something in somebody out there that God created you specifically for. You. He knew what parents to give you. He knew what environment to put you in because he had a goal in mind and he says, that's who I want to use for it. He had an idea and he created you. And he created you to accomplish something. And so through our story, through our time, and through the things that we've been through, and you'll know what I'm talking about if you've had a, a, some, some difficulty in your life. And if you've not, please meet me afterwards. I want to talk to you. I want to know what you're doing to not have went through anything. But through those difficult times and through those hard times, Todd and I went back, and you've prayed, and you've prayed, and you've prayed. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Does anybody here know what I'm talking about? And you have said every scripture you know to, to, to quote. You have prayed every prayer that you know to pray. You've contacted every pastor that you have on your contact list. You have done communion. You have woke up at 5 o'clock in the morning and walked around your house, and you have prayed and rebuked. But the situation is still the same. Matter of fact, it's worse. I hope nobody knows what I'm talking about, but I have a feeling you do. And um, you finally reach a point, Pastor, you say, okay. <laughs> Nothing's changing. Your Bible, the Bible says the fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Ask and you shall receive. 
All of these things we have quoted, and we're like, but it's not happening. So obviously, I begin to check myself. I'm like, has my faith left? Did my faith go somewhere? Because the Bible says all it takes is a grain of a mustard seed, and I could see the mountain moved, right? So I, I'm like, did my faith go somewhere? What, what happened along the way? Because the same prayer that I prayed when Gabby was healed of pyloric stenosis, the same prayer that I prayed to have Daddy come home safe, the same prayer that I prayed when I was told I was not going to be able to con- conceive is the same prayer that I prayed over and over and over again, and it always seemed to get worse. Oh, God, thanks, Pastor, for bringing this woman up in here today. (laughs) Boy, she's encouraging me so far. Promise I'm going somewhere. But does anybody understand what I'm saying? I'm building something here. I'm building here. Because, see, you finally have to get to a point to say, he's not moved yet. So there must be something he wants to show me. He's not healed her yet. And I know that his ways are much greater than my ways. I can't understand for one second why that gorgeous baby that he gave me can't see my face. I can't understand for one second why he would no more her to see this gorgeous world that he created. But it's not my place to understand it, Pastor. You know what it is my place? To trust him. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> it is my place to trust him. Now I was beginning to wonder if Pastor was going to get all over my message a little while ago. But as I uh, sit back and I begin to reflect on all the things that God has done, one day God really revealed and shaked my, shaked me, rocked me to the core. And I begin to realize one of the many things that God was revealing to me through our story and through what was happening in our lives. Before I literally show you I want to read something really quick, Psalms 25, 1 through 5. And it says, I would love to give you time, but because, of, because we're a little bit of a time crunch, I'll go ahead and begin to read. I read ESV version. It says, To you, Lord, I lift my soul, O my God, in you I trust. Let me not be put to shame. Let not my enemies exult over me. Indeed, none who wait for you shall be put to shame. They shall be be ashamed who are wont only treacherous. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your paths, truth, and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all the day long. Now, the reason why I read that is because what was David just saying? Teach me something, God. God, I need to know your ways. I need to know you. And I need you to hold on to that thought as I continue with this message. This will be the theme we come back to by the time we get to the end of this message. If... if uh, if uh, Todd would bring Gabby up here, I want to demonstrate something for you. Can I come down here, Pastor? I'm sorry, cameras. I know sometimes I throw tech all for a loop when I do stuff like this. One day I was in town, and some of you already know this story, but for those of you who don't, I'm going to recap this really fast. I was praying and asking God to please help me understand what he was up to because he wasn't answering my prayers and finally one day as I was walking with Gabby hey Gabby Gabby there's a lot of people looking at you right now can you say hey Uh hey hey and um, as I was walking with her she was two at the time I was uh, walking in town and praying um, and he said, uh, well, Karen, I know your heart's broken, and I know you're, 
having a hard time. But if you will, just pay attention to your little girl. So I did. And I began to notice something that she would do. And if you'll watch, watch what she does. Watch what she does. Gabby, Mom. who am I? Mama. 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 And he just said, I just want you to know me and trust me like she trusts you. Did you notice that when I stopped, she stopped? Did you notice when I would guide her to turn, she would turn? Did you notice when I go, she'll go? Amen. Do you notice, and would you, and I'm sure you would be able to imagine this with me. Here you are. There's nobody on earth that knows these hands better than she does. There is nobody that knows this voice better than she does. And so literally, God said, Karen, you don't have a faith problem. He says, you don't have, you've not lost your faith because I gave it to you. You all remember me talking about that? He, all, he gave us all faith and we can't lose it. So he looked at me and he says, Karen, you don't have a faith problem. You just have a trust problem. You just don't trust me. And as you all may or may not remember, trust is a verb. Trust means you have to do something to prove that you do trust. Trust is something you do. Not just something you say. But it's something you do. I want to read Psalms 30. 3 through 4. And if you, if you want to turn here, I would highly suggest it. Because there's something great that is said in these scriptures. Well, is that the right one? Turn to Psalms 84, 8. Is, this, is the tech guy following me as well? Okay, maybe not good. I'm not making him crazy back there. Because I'm a little crazy sometimes. Turn to Psalms 84, 8 through 12. I'm only going to read verse 12 really quick. But if I could highly suggest to you to do 8 through 12, I would. The very last sentence of verse 12 says, Blessed is the one who trusts in you. Anybody want to be blessed? Anybody? Anybody want to be blessed? Anybody want to see your situation changed? Blessed is the one who trusts in me. No wonder I've not gotten it. No wonder. So I said, God, help me. Help me, God, to no longer have a trust problem. Help me, God, to be able to put my faith in action and actually begin to trust you no matter what situation may come my way. Is there anybody in this room that would like to be able to look at your mountain and to be able to look at your situation that looks so big, so intimidating, it's so difficult, and want to look up at it and say, I don't care how big you are, I trust my God, and I know in whom I serve. You may think you've got me under control, but I am here to tell you I I am not afraid because I serve the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So bring all one may. I trust in the almighty hand of God who will never leave me nor forsake me nor leave me begging for 
bread. I beg God, God, I want to get there. That's where I want to be. I want to be able to look and not be afraid. Not be intimidated. Not get scared every time the phone rings. Not get scared every time that I don't get a job that I want. Not get afraid every time I don't have the money in the bank that I need to pay the electricity bill. Not be afraid when the children aren't acting the way that I would love for them to act. Not be afraid when the church isn't moving quite like we want it to move. Does anybody hear what I'm saying? I want to be able to get to the point that I don't care what it is. I'm not going to be afraid. I'm not going to be intimidated. I'm not going to be concerned. Why? Because I trust him. Because I trust him. Blessed is the one who puts their trust in God. If for no other reason, I'll trust him because I want to be blessed. Y'all hear me? I just want to trust you. When I uh, got to the point with Gabby, and I heard that, and I think I may have shared this last time, people would ask me, and they would say, where's your faith, Karen? And I'd be honest with you. I'd get mad. I'd get upset. Where's my (laughs) faith? Where's my faith? Now, mind you, these are the people, too. Everything's going well. (laughs) They live in their two-story home with a pretty white picket fence. They got got a wonderful job. The wife gets to stay at home. Ooh. Mm. The (laughs) wife gets to stay. (laughs) There's some wives that was feeling what I just said in this place. (laughs) Get to stay home, go to the gym, get her nails did, (laughs) get her hair done. Pastor's daughter can take care of that, I hear, right there. Where's your faith? And I have to be honest with you, sometimes I may may not have been as close to Jesus as I needed to be. Because I would look at them and say, can you show me what that looks like then? Have faith, Karen. Okay. I have it. But can you come up? Can, can you explain that to me? Can you tell me how that looks? Because I've done everything that I was raised to do and this Bible says to do. And it ain't, it's not happened yet. So can you show me what that looks like? Now, I know that's a little harsh and hard. That's just truth. That's just truth. So finally, through this, Reading the word, finding out that God was trying to teach me, Karen, you don't have a faith problem, you just have a trust problem. Once again, God led me back to that little girl. He says, Karen, do you know why Gabby trusts you? And I begin to think about it. Why is it that Gabby trusts me? Before I tell you that, I want you to think of something. Are you ready? Look at your neighbor and say, get ready. I want you to think of two people. If it's just one, that's fine. But I want you to think of two people that are in your life that you trust more than life itself. Think of two people in your life. One, for all I care. Think of someone that you know if you needed them, that it wouldn't matter if it was 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, that it didn't matter how bad your circumstance was, you know without a shadow of a doubt that this person would come through for you. You know without a doubt how this person feels for you. Think of someone you trust. Someone you know you can depend upon. 
Everybody got it? I want to ask you this now. Is that person a stranger? Is that someone that you've never seen before? Is that someone that you would trust your own life with? Someone you've only known maybe for two months, two weeks? Am I not there yet? Well then, maybe, maybe the person you're thinking about then, do they live in your home? Have you been with the person for a long time? Y'all can say yeah if you want to. <laughs> have you, have you, do you, do you see that person almost on a daily basis? Do you see that person almost on a daily basis? Does that person live with you or real close to you? Okay. Same here. Same there. You know what God said? You know what, Karen? How in the world can you trust me if I don't live with you? How in the world, Karen, you going to trust me if you don't see me daily? How in the world are you going to trust me if you don't communicate with me daily? How in the world are you going to get to trust in me if you don't know me? Gabby knows me. She knows my voice better than anyone. My hands better than anyone. She allows me to take her anywhere because she trusts me. But the only reason that beautiful little girl will allow me to take her anywhere is because she knows who I am. She knows everything about me. She knows the tone of my voice. She knows when mommy's upset. She knows when mommy's not so upset. <laughs> you know how we were able to get to the point that Gabby could know me? And this is something that's very important. People, the only way we can ever get to the point that we can know God, which will allow us to trust God, is we have to put in some relational rent. Amen. Friends, there is no way, no way, and I say that with the utmost most conviction. There is no way you will ever be able to come over a situation and be able to be victorious over it if you don't know who Jesus Christ is. And the only way you're going to be able to get to the point that you know him like she knows me is every single day you better carve you some time out to be able to get into the word find some time to be able to get on your knees and begin to speak and communicate with the very one that will be able to bring you through whatever trial or situation you may find yourself in because I'm telling you there's going to come a day there's going to come a day you're going to need to make a withdrawal there's going to come a day where you are tapped out and it's all gone it'd be a sad day pastor when I need him the most and I go to him and there's nothing there no deposits have been made. There's nothing to draw from. Gosh, that's heart-wrenching. Heart-wrenching. So I beg of you. You want to know Jesus? You want to trust him? You better put some relational rent in. 
Now I have to say this really quick. <laughs> I have to be careful because sometimes I share this story and we're all like, Woo, Sister Karen, I want to trust Jesus. Yeah. I want to trust him. I want to be able to look at any mountain, any situation, and know that Jesus has got my back. Sometimes, though, we don't want to hear what it has to take to get there. And I'm not being harsh. I'm not trying to be scary or anything like that. I'm just being real. I'm just telling you what God showed me and what I feel like God wants you to hear today. God's really desperate for you to put some relational rent in. He's ready to know you. He's ready for you to know him. See, he already knows you. He knows everything about you. He's just ready for you to get to knowing him. And if you'll start putting that relational rent in, <laughs> and you continue to do it, and every day you carve out that time you need to carve out to be able to pray and speak and talk with him, read his word, and get to know him, there's no way that you can get to know him if you don't read this word, people. I'm sorry to tell you that, but you're going to have to read the word if you want to get to know in Jesus Christ, okay? You're going to have to read the word of God. And once you begin to read the word of God, and you begin to talk to him, and you say, God, can you tell me what this means? Can you tell me how I need to do this? Can you tell me how I need to interpret this? I can tell you right now, I don't care how big the mountain gets, you will find yourself then. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. Because I know him. I know who he is. And what is the most amazing thing? You know what's amazing, Mama? Once you get to know him, you begin to learn how much he loves us. Whew. You begin to learn how much he loves you. We all know John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. And he loves you so much. That he knows the number of hair you have upon your head. And when you begin to learn his love, you begin to learn how passionate he is about you, how much everything in your life matters to him. You begin to realize he's not mad at you, he's not upset at you, he's just doing what a good father would do. And he's just preparing you for what may lie ahead. He's just preparing you because he knows what lies ahead for you. So because out of his love for you, he will allow all of these trials and these tribulations to develop your character to catch up to your calling. So now that... Um, I began to realize those things. My heart just filled up with so much desire to share this revelation with people. Because I know what it's like to sit where you are and be begging God to give me something to help me through what I'm facing. And I have to be very transparent with you that this past week wasn't that great for me either. This past week has been pretty rough. To say the least. The whole time, Pastor, I had to go back and I had to make withdrawals from the relational rent that I have put in. So it's been difficult. It's been hard. But thank God, I was able to trust Jesus. And I was able to look at the situation that we were in. And say, I don't understand it. It's not my place to understand it. But I trust God. And I know he knows. He knows my heart. So now what I really like to do, I really like to now get fired up. Okay? There ain't nothing like a good shout. 
Y'all know what I'm saying? Nothing like a good shout. Especially when you make a revelation about like, wow! All I have to do is wake up every day and start making daily deposits, reading the word. That's all I got to do to begin to know the one who created heaven and earth. That I can get to trust him. So no matter what comes my way, I can get through it. Woo! That makes me want to shout. It makes me so excited because I, I all the time believe the devil believed that he had me defeated. Anybody know what I'm saying? The devil does everything that he can to make you feel defeated. But I'm so happy now that I can get my shout on and I'll grab my iPad and I have written down what God is to me. And this is the guy I know. I just pick up my iPad and I pick up my pen or my Bible and I'll just say, you know what, devil? You may think you're going to defeat me, but let me just inform you of who I know. Let me just inform you of who knows me. Let me just inform you. Woo! Oh my God! He is the Almighty. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the author and the finisher of my faith. He is the bread of life. He is the chief cornerstone. He is the deliverer. He is the Holy One. Anybody hear what I'm saying? He is the Lamb of God. He is the Lion of the tribe of Judah. He is the morning star. He is my Savior. He's my healer. He is Jehovah Jireh. He is Jehovah. Over Shiloh, and I just begin to put the devil on notice. I may not understand it. I may not ever understand it. And that's one of the, the lies the devil wants us to always believe to get us discouraged. But I just don't understand it, God. How many of y'all use an iPhone? How many of you use a smartphone? Do you understand it? <laughs> Do you know how it works? Does it keep you from using it? I get that all the time. People get mad at me then I'm not mad about my situation. Can you believe that? <laughs> but I'm like, <laughs> why would I be so upset that I don't understand? Isn't that what faith is? Isn't that what trust is supposed to be? I, when I get on the airplane, Pastor, I don't go look up the pilot's resume. I don't go see if the, what, what company is it that looks over them, honey? Whoever takes care of pilots, <laughs> whoever takes care of them and makes sure that they are qualified. I don't do that. I trust it. And that's what I have to do with God. God, I don't understand it, but it's not my place to understand. I'm just going to trust you. Now, I know this is a little different maybe than what Pastor, Pastor does, and maybe my speaking was a little scattered today, but I'll be honest with you, a little emotional from the past week that I've had myself. And um, it's so timely that this message is the one that came because it's reminded me of how to trust God. Is there anybody that wants to put some relational around with, with Jesus today? Is there anybody that wants to get to know him? Is there anybody that wants to trust him? Is there anybody that wants to be blessed? I believe God has shown us today what we need to be able to accomplish those things. I wish I could have gotten it easier than I did. Apparently I'm real hard-headed. But I do thank God for the lessons he's shown me. And let me know that I didn't have a faith problem. But I just had a trust problem.